the pure hate and disdain I've heard on 307s the last month kind of makes a guy want to build one. So I'm going to tear this puppy down and see if it's actually worth fixing on or if we're going to pass on it. And all the 307 is is a 283 at the 327 crank. Not a lot of cubes and not a lot of RPM at all. They usually fall flat about 45, 4800. But if this thing is worth rebuilding on, I got a couple ideas. Might give us about 100 horse bolt on. I'm hoping for. So let's jump in, tear everything down, and see what we're looking at here. Overall, I had some pretty good feedback on the budget 350 build, but one of the most common questions was, yeah, cool, but can you do it for 500 or 300 or some ridiculously low amount? But the truth is you actually can, guys. They make master rebuild kits for 310 bucks on eBay, pistons, stock camshaft, bearings, rings, gaskets, even an oil pump, but it's stock. You're not going to get any performance out of it. Uh, there's no way around spending money on a cam. And I really wouldn't buy cams used personally. You just, you really don't know unless you can run a micrometer and figure out all the diagramicals on measuring that sucker. How do you know it's not worn out? So, but if this is worth repairing, I think I can get away for right around $600 all in and see if we can get, oh no. Well, as I was saying, $600, let's kick that up to about $700. I'm gonna show you what not changing your oil does to an engine. Well, when you wanna go ahead and wait to change your oil to 7,000 miles on conventional, yeah, go ahead and don't do that, guys. This is uh, pretty much what that does. And I'm pretty certain we're gonna see a lot of the same once we pull the intake off in the lifter valley. It's not good. Well, a guy could go ahead and grab a cold snack and I'm gonna get the rest of this off quick. Let's see what we got in here. Yep, just as expected. Great, grand. Well, here you go, as you can see, this engine was clearly not taken care of. There's just junk everywhere. So all this is pretty much shot. So let's pop the heads off and see what we got going on there. As a reminder, the th number three Definitely something going on there. All right, let's pull this head off and get our first look at what we got going on here. At first glance, not too bad. Here's what it looks like. The main thing I'm looking at is the cylinder walls here. And not too bad. There's some crud that fell in when we pulled the heads off, but it's not bad at all, really. So let's go take a look at that head now. Well, here's the underside of the head. And you can clearly see we've got issues in this one. This is excessive oil. And based on the condition of the cylinder walls, I can easily assume that this is the umbrella seal or stem seal on the valve is shot. And when I looked closer on the other side, which you can't see because of the coil bind, the Umbrella seal is shredded and clearly shot. So long story short, these heads need completely rebuilt, unfortunately, because it's not fun. All right, let's snag off this side. Number three is hurt, so I'm really interested to see 
what's going on here? Yeah. Well, some pretty good news. It does have some very light vertical scratches, fairly typical. I think just some ball honing will get out of there, but nothing catastrophic. I'm thinking just a carboned up or stuck compression ring, which is the uh, low compression. And of course the heads over here, we see definite valve seal failure and major valve seal failure on this side. Uh, Got to get this carbon off to see if any of them are actually burned. But long story short, the heads are junk. I think the block and rotating assembly is savable. So now it's time to ponder. Well, I think what a guy's going to do is got my digital pocket machine here. I'm going to get on the line and see if I can find some other used heads. And while I'm doing that, and you know, hopefully waiting for some to show up. I'll just rebuild the uh, rotating assembly here. It's late Sunday, very unlikely, A, I'm gonna get those built in time, and B, I'm gonna find the right stem seals and everything else that I need for it. Plus, if you've ever rebuilt heads. And those are 74 cc heads. So in the grand scheme of things, if I could pick up some junk heads that are maybe 58 or even 64 cc chambers, we're on our way to make a little bit better horsepower anyway. These are junk heads, they're garbage. So see what I can find on the interwebs and then we'll tear into this guy here. Ooh, what's this? An umbrella? Hmm. I'll be dicked if the interwebs didn't come through. I've got some heads on the way. Kid's actually driving three hours one way because they're a very specific head that I'm really glad I found. I'll show you when they get here. In the meantime, I spent a couple hours cleaning up the uh, block, the pistons, the, where the head gasket mated, and the lifter valley was trash, as you guys could see. I uh, just used a bunch of different wire wheels and brushes from Benchmark. They pretty much have every size and shape, tightly wound, loose wound, whatever else you need. So I'll get you guys in here and get you a closer look at what it's looking like now. Well, here's what it's looking like now. As you can see, drastic change. Lots of elbow grease, but guy will get there. And I even took my fancy piston scriber, which for me is just a roofing nail, and marked on my pistons which is which, because these definitely aren't gonna be bored to round, so I wanna keep each piston in the correct cylinder for reassembly, so we don't get into any issues there. But this is gonna work just fine. So I'm gonna flip her over, pop the pistons out, and start ringing this puppy. This is a part I absolutely despise. I just can't stand coolant on my floor, but just haven't gotten around to buying that $20 little pan thing you put underneath here, so I just let her go all over the place. I got to looking at this and I'm really surprised Feller made her. All the way around this timing gear is cracked. And not like cracked, I mean like cracked. And then she's got a little bit of play on her. Um, yeah. Anyway, stripped the bolt out so I gotta get my gear puller 300 out and zing zang it. Not gonna use this gear anyway or the cam, so this way, she's gonna come right out on a guy. I am about 12.6% curious what this cam looks like. Get on out of there, easy, <sighs> easy, whoop. All right, snag out the compression twister and that's it for disassembly. There we go. All right, next step is honing. I skipped this on the 350 budget build, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit first. I'm doing molly rings this time, so I'm gonna do it in a two-step. Gonna snap on it with the 240 or 280 grit, can't remember, and 
that will bring it down to a 400. And uh, most Molly rings like the 400 a little bit better. So that's what we're gonna do and I'll show you how to do that. Man, she's dirty. Whew. I think I got everything here I need. Got my 240 hone, my 400 hone, because again, I'm using Molly rings. And I got some Resolute motor, I, I don't know. It's got a flag on it, so I bought it. Basically 1030 oil or any penetrating oil will work really. They also make honing oil, but I wouldn't spend the money on it. And if you're gonna use a unit with a battery, make sure she's full on and you got an extra laying around. You wanna have consistency in your drill speed. And remember that honing is really just for helping your ring seat and cleaning up the cylinders a little bit. It's not to repair damage. So if you've got deep enough scratches in here where you're going, Moses sandals, those are deep. You're gonna have to punch it out. There's no way around it. This is just a quick little zing zang and gets those rings seated. I'm gonna do seven of them and then on my last one, I'll show you kind of the process here of how I do that. Yeah, let's do something here. Yes, I guess. A few minutes later, seven are done. That's what they look like finished up. Nice 45 degree cross hatch. And then obviously the number two cylinder is not done. I'm gonna show you how to do that one right now. Okay, again, you're not really drilling anything here, guys. We're more sweeping or cleaning. So for me and my drill, uh, this cheap little Hitachi, it's low speed. And I'll show you before I go in here. Now I'm gonna take my American flag oil and try to dam off a little bit here. Don't need a lot. Get her in there, just wipe, get her in, wipe it around. Get it on there. All the way around the cylinder like that. Biggest thing with these dingle ball hones is you want them spinning before you enter the cylinder. You don't wanna jam them in, then start spinning. They need to be spinning as you enter the hone. For me, it's about like this, okay? This is moving the correct speed. Again, you don't want this really fast. So here's what it looks like. I go 10 times. Normally I go 20, but I'm splitting it between 240 grit and 400. Three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. And I pull it all the way out before I stop. And then if we take our rag, all this gray color, that's the material you just brought off. Right there. I've already got a nice 45 degree hatch. But I'm gonna change my dingle ball quick to a 400 and then we're gonna do it one more time. That's it. Cylinder is honed. Almost forgot, make sure you use water displacement on the 40th try or PB blaster or something. You're gonna to wanna to coat these cylinders down with oil so they don't start flash rusting on you, especially if they're gonna be sitting for a while. Um, I just use PB blaster and I clean them once with it and then I soak it down one good time and boom, cam time. This time I went to the guys at Lunati, um, called them up explain the project and we spent quite a bit of time actually figuring out exactly what cam would work great with this. Yeah, and it all was based on keeping the stock factory heads, which is kind of a bummer because I'm not. So this is probably not going to be exactly correct now. We went with a really tight, smaller duration um, with a medium to high lift. Uh, and then a pretty lazy lobe separation angle, which we thought would maximize the factory heads. But I've got some different heads I'm gonna show you now, and I could have went quite a bit more cam. One of the biggest mistakes on 283s and 307s is everybody puts these giant cams in them, and then they wonder why they don't work for a feller, is they're really easy to over cam. So I'm gonna stick this in, and then we'll get to uh, drop the crank in. By the way, I just made a phone call to a friend uh, I'm really, really curious, as probably you guys are as well. I booked some dyno time. So when this sucker's done, stick around and hang in there because we're gonna put it on the engine dyno and just feed her, give her the, feed her the onions, give her the coal, and we're gonna test on it and see what a guy did to it, I guess. Hmm. 
I think I know what a guy's thinking, and don't worry, it wasn't. If you know me by now, this cam and lifter kit was, I think it was only 120 bucks. So when comparing it to Summit and a couple other options, this was more of a design that I wanted and the price was right. I looked at roller cams for about two seconds, then that quickly passed. Definitely wasn't gonna put that kind of money in this 307. But I may or may not be gapping the rings wide. And if you can figure that one out, let me know. What do you think I may have in mind for this little guy? I don't think I got enough lubes. I'm gonna run out. Hey Lunati, put more lubes in your stuff. Oop, almost forgot to grab a cam tool. I've never actually bought one. I just use a bolt or whatever junk I have laying around it. <laughs> Seems to work. Let me go find one. Cam tool. Just be careful with the threads and guy will be all right. Plus you can always reach in here and guide her through anyway. We went back and forth on sound versus performance and being that it's a little 307, a guy went ahead and opted for tire fryer mode instead of that lumpy uh, idle that I usually go for. Now the high dollar professionally polished crank goes in. Well, I guess if it's not obvious for a guy, it's, it's raining like a racehorse peeing on a flat rock and I just can't hear a dang thing in here. I'm sure, I don't even, can you hear me now? Sound test, sound. Anyway, I've been dragging my feet all night waiting for the rain to shut down so I can do some digital recording. But I don't think it's gonna happen. I cleaned up the heads. Um, I've got a set of the 1401-1416 castings, which probably doesn't mean anything to you folks if you're a Ford or a Mopar guy, but those are the fabled HO305 heads. They have a 184-15 valve set at 58 cc's. So we're gonna pop them on here and bump the compression up quite a bit. Uh, I gotta measure my head gasket still for the thickness of that so I can get a final compression ratio, but I think we're gonna be at a 97 to one, which is getting up there for pump gas because we're gonna run lawnmower fuel on this from the 80s. If you watch the 350 budget build, just a reminder to clock your rings correctly, make sure you oil up your wrist pin in here, and uh, be careful when you're dropping them down in there so your bolts don't hit the crank. You can put fuel line or something on your bolt studs if you want, but I just dig the old mitt under there and then bang them down in. There's this side. I went ahead and marked on them with the marker because my uh, roofing nail was kind of going away. You guys make sure you have a clean workspace when you do this stuff. It's important not to get debris and dirt and things like that uh, in your rings or any of that stuff. So make sure it's nice and clean. But I'll set you guys up over here and I'll drop a couple in and you can watch me fumble around. All right, got my piston ready. Oiled up the rings. Got rid of most of the dirt. Clamped her down. Set her in like this, oil up the wrist pins. And then I take this used lawnmower oil and get her down the hole in here and work it around. And if you got any big chunks in there, you dig them out. You wanna to try to get both set dirt and oil out of there. Just twist until your shoulder pops, like that. Then grab your piston in her 55, and uh, you just bang on her like a cabin screen door, and it'll go right down. I mean, that's basically it, fellers. Now I'll just whip her on around and catch the old uh, rod and whoosh, right into the old crank. and. Got three more left and then I think I'm gonna shut her down for the night and then that means tomorrow I have, oh, two and a half hours after my day job to do everything else because then Thursday morning, I'm still gonna dyno this. In fact, he called me today and great guy, awesome shop, but he does like thousand horsepower engines and I said, Derek, are you sure that you wanna dyno this thing? And I said, yep. And he said, that's uh kind of an excessive waste of money. And I said, well, I'm gonna do the right thing and I'll see you at 9 a.m. Oh, one thing a guy I forgot to mention when I did the 350 build is some of these 
Timing chain sets come with three different dowel pin settings on the crank sprocket. So you want to pay attention to that because you're going to have zero degrees, you're going to have retarded timing and advanced timing. So make sure you read the old directions correctly, otherwise you're going to have a world of hurt trying to time it up top thinking you're at zero. And because I really want to torque the next guy off that's in this sucker, I'm going to put a little bit of never come off juice on here. And if it happens to be me, well, I'm probably going to go ahead and change my $17 timing set if I'm putting a new camera in anyway, so I don't mind. And I lost one of these, so I'm just going to take this bolt I found off the floor and jam her in there and that ought to work. And uh, how much torque? All of it. Well, I went ahead and destroyed the budget. I think we're going to have more into an oil pan gasket than the whole piston ring set. These guys have it dialed in. This is a really nice kit. It comes with all the bolts and washers and everything else. And if you guys can make these things work without leaking, you're my hero because they just never work for me. And then I got this real nice piece of OEM hardware that's all cleaned up pretty. Just hit her with some brake clean. We'll throw that on there and call it good. Chrome don't get you home, fellas. It just doesn't. Time to snip the heads on. And I'm pretty good with heads. And I could tell you just by looking at these and the valves down here that they have precisely between one and 319,000 miles on them. And if a guy had half a brain, he'd of course replace the valve seals, probably grind on the valves or replace them and get them flexed for cracks and warping. But I'm gonna do the right thing and just bolt them straight on. I love this brake clean. I actually buy it in the box, it's a better deal. I even use it to wash my hands, to be honest. It burns a little bit, but you can fight right through that. Well, get on there. Yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, okay. I'm gonna get these tossed in. I got some really El Cheapo Melling lifters just over the counter at O'Reilly's. I have the rockers sitting in my uh, cleaning tank, which is just some used oil pan on the ground over here filled with some lawnmower gas. And once those soak down a little bit, I'll go over and brush them off with the dirty brush that I attempted to clean the oil pan with. And then I'll snip them on here. Adjust the rockers, throw the intake on, and then we're in the home stretch. I'm always curious what other fellers use for intake gaskets. Uh, throw it in the comment box below. I'm, I'm genuinely interested. Do you guys use the rubber ones supplied? They got these little nipples that fit in there. Are those the cork ones or you go old school and draw yourself a quarter inch bead? I tend to go old school. I just feel like I get a better seal in the corners. Um, but yeah, tell me, uh, tell me what you run and why. I'm curious. Boom, intake's on. I'm gonna let the RTV set up a little bit more then I'll come back and torque it down. This is my secret weapon. You might have actually seen this hanging on the wall in some of the other episodes, but this is what's called a winter's intake. Uh, they're actually really cool, and you could tell by this kind of snowflakey looking design stamped on them. And some of them are actually pretty rare, like this one. Uh, this particular casting number is a 1969 Camaro Z28 with a 302 built in the fall. Um, kind of the last production performance intake of that era. This is a mid-rise dual plane aluminum intake. You can see it's a little bit taller than like an Edelbrock or some of the other ones, and it gives it longer, straighter runners into the heads. So I'm hoping that this is gonna help kind of jam some more air into these little heads and ultimately make maybe 2.9 more horsepower. That'd be all right. Well, there a feller goes. She's all done. I got all the junk stacked up here for tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna load it up early in the morning and head over to competition engines. Throw it on the old machine and hope that I just don't twist it in half. I'm pretty excited for it actually. Catch you in the morning. Oh, good morning. Quick stop on the way to the dyno. I had to snip up a carburetor. I keep coming back to pad the team here at the carburetor shop. These guys do unbelievable work and it's super affordable. These guys are so dang busy they don't even list business hours so you just gotta give them a call. But you phone them up and say, this is what I got and what I'm working on, and, and they go, yep, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, got it. I tell you what, you bolt them on, they run like O.J. Simpson. Rarely do I gotta do anything to them. And I think they got one of them eBay stores on the lines too, but 
tell them I sent you down and I'm sure they'll hook you up, give you some sort of good deal. Uh, really good stuff. Well, we made it to competition engines. The old put the engine in a flat tire and hold it down with a strap from the 80s actually worked. This place is awesome. I wish I could sleep on the floor in here. It's really good. They average like 600, 700 horse on this machine, so I'm really hoping that the old 307 doesn't just rip it out of the ground. But I'm gonna back the truck in, get her unloaded, and start getting it set up. I could probably hear it, but the engine's in the booth right now, so we got about 20 minutes or so for the break-in period, then we're gonna test on it. You know, give it, feed her the onions, give her some pull. In the meantime, I'm just gonna wander around and this place is good. No leaks. I cannot believe it. Good job. <laughs> well, it's 90% grease, 10% luck. <laughs> uh, we'll start out with like 33 degrees of timing in it. And uh, put this thing on. Alright, put you on the spot. Make you guess. Oh, should I guess first so you don't hurt my feelings? I mean, it eked out a couple more horsepower. We can look at these numbers now. In this, in this window, 
and then two to that, you know. Gotcha. So the last poll was 5,300 RPM. So far we're at 277 horsepower with 275 foot-pounds of torque. Now we're gonna start doing some tuning out here on it. We're gonna go with Scotchmore timing on the girl and then we're gonna take her to 5,500 since they like 4,500. So we're gonna give her, we're gonna give it to her. We're gonna test on it a little harder. All right, so 5,500, we'll see if the spring's hanging in there. Did you put a pretty good valve spring on it? Nope. Stop. Unknown miles. Oh boy. We're probably going to push our limit there a little. Do you need some help? Do you want me to help yeah, you? Could you tell me what that says up there? What is the barometric pressure? Let's start with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just got all buttoned up and loaded again. That was a lot of fun for a guy, to be honest. I got the best run here, uh, which is run number six. We ended up doing eight or nine, uh, playing with the timing a little bit. 34 degrees is what it likes. And it came up to 290 horsepower and 328 foot-pounds of torque. Torque came in at 3,800, power was at 5,500, and uh, we didn't want to spin it past that. Uh, stock valve train, unknown miles or condition. I, I didn't want to drop a valve in here and make a mess, so. Uh, overall, really happy for a few hundred bucks, guys. This Rail 7 is gonna be plenty of fun on the street. Nice little cruiser. So if you got a 305, 283, 307, 327, don't be afraid to throw a couple bucks at them, have a little bit of fun, so. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please do that. I'm going to do something with this 307. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be cool. Guarantee it. The button will be down here somewhere else. Find us on the face space and Instagrams as well. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.